Good morning, and welcome to Sydney Methodist Church on this uh, significant Sunday morning as we gather together to worship Almighty God and as we gather together to, uh, to dedicate the church council, but also as well this morning, um, the welcome area, uh, the refurbished welcome area, as well as the, uh, the cross and the kneeling stools that are at the front here. Um, it's wonderful to see you all here this morning, whether you're in the building or whether you're at home watching this live or watching this later on, uh, you're all very, very welcome. Um, we want to welcome any visitors who are with us uh, as well. And I want to uh, give a special warm welcome uh, to Francis and Dennis Sweeney. Uh, Francis is a cousin of uh, Desmond Ferguson. And uh, uh, we will uh, dedicate and to the glory of God and to the memory of Desmond, the cross and the kneeling stools this morning. So thank you so much. Uh, you've traveled from Fermanagh this morning. Uh, to be here with us, and we are grateful uh, for your presence and how you've given the time. Uh, so thank you very much, and you're very, very welcome. As the psalmist wrote, Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end, you are God. So we sing together, and Jenny's going to lead us. Let's stand together and sing, Oh, praise the name.
Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's a privilege to gather together to worship you. You are the maker of all things good. We acknowledge your presence with us this morning. Open our minds and our hearts to receive your word. You are the creator of all things. As we gaze on the beauty of nature around us, the beauty of this world and the universe, the developments you have inspired, such as those in medicine, engineering, and commerce, we can only join with the words of Psalm 8. What is man that you are mindful of him? And again in verse 9, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We come together as church family this morning and as members of your body, united in our desire to extend your kingdom, both in our personal life and witness, and also corporately as your gathered church in this part of your kingdom called Sydenham. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we rejoice today at the completion of our welcome area, which will be dedicated later. We give you thanks and praise that the work was completed in safety, and that it overcame the restrictions imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic and that all the costs have been met. Thank you for the generosity we have received, and we ask your blessing on each person who supported the project and the members of the work team as well. Most of all, we thank you, Lord, for the way, many ways you have helped us during the building phase. We ask you to bless the ministry that will be enabled and enhanced by the transformation of our former vestibule into an attractive welcome area. We pray, Lord, that we will always be an open and welcoming fellowship here. We have a burden for the local community. May our minds and hearts and hands and feet be used by you to bring your presence, your love and compassion and practical help to those who may be facing difficulties or be in any kind of need. May we follow our Lord's instructions to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Heavenly Father, we pray especially for people experiencing mental health issues and the various forms of dementia, possibly exasperated, exasperated by having difficulties in coping with the COVID restrictions. We pray for people suffering from COVID and also for those suffering from cancer we pray for those who may be grieving at this time. As opportunities present themselves, Lord, please give us grace and wisdom to minister in these situations in your name. Lord, you are the giver and sustainer of life, and we thank you and praise you once again. Thank you for your presence with us in times of joy as well as in darker times we all experience. May we be joyful in hope and patient in affliction, in the knowledge that nothing can separate us from your love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. These prayers are offered in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our mediator and friend. Amen. Just a few announcements to uh, share with you this morning. Um, as always, the stewards will lead you out at the end of the service. And uh, just to remind you of uh, the retiring offering, um, to remember to wear masks um, inside the building unless you have an exemption, and to remember social distancing. Um, with the larder, um, we're asked to bring particularly this month um, tinned meat, rice, jam, or ketchup. Um, so if you have any of those items and any other items like the fruit and vegetables that we've been asked for this month, uh, please do bring those along in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the walking group meets uh, Monday night, as always, at 7 p.m., uh, meeting at the church. Uh, the Haiti Earthquake Appeal uh, through our World Development and Relief Fund um, finishes in a week's time, so please do, if you haven't already given to that, um, please do that as soon as you can. 
Um, Welcome Wednesdays. Uh, We had our first one on Wednesday past, uh, 2.30 to 3.30. Come along for a cup of tea and a coffee and a chat. Um, It was lovely. We had uh, about 30 people um, here on on Wednesday, and it was lovely. So please do come along. It's open to anybody and everybody, um, regardless of who you are, whether you're in the church, you're outside the church, um, whatever age you are, whoever you are, come along just for a time of fellowship and chat. Uh, The prayer focus prayer manuals are available. If you want to pick up a copy, please do so and just leave three pounds in the plate. Uh, Men's breakfast is uh, next Saturday, uh, 18th of September, um, and that's at nine o'clock in um, uh, the Orchard Cafe. Uh, Speak to uh, to Derek for more uh, details about that for the men's breakfast next Saturday morning. Uh, This morning, then, we're going to have uh, tea and coffee after church. Uh, Of course, there are certain guidelines uh, in place for that, um, but feel free to take uh, tea and coffee and uh, take it outside and mingle outside. We'd had announced if it it was anything like we'd have a church picnic. If you've brought uh, sandwiches and the likes with you, um, please just avail of that. Just enjoy that, a time together. If you haven't brought uh, food with you, then don't worry, um, but please do enjoy a time of fellowship um, after the service. And then next week, um, we have, it's Local Preacher Sunday. That doesn't mean necessarily that just a local preacher uh, leads the service. Um, I will be here to lead and preach. Uh, The various local preachers will be taking part in leading the service. But it's also the admission of Adam as a fully accredited local preacher. And uh, and so that's a a service to look forward to and, and anticipate next Sunday. So please bear that in mind. And of course, uh, Crash and Kids Zone uh, continue, uh, and they will leave in a few minutes' time. But I think these are all the announcements for the moment. I'm going to invite uh, Rachel to come forward. Good morning. It is lovely to be back here and to see some of the boys and girls out this morning. I know it's a bit different because we have to stay down in our seats, but I can see you from up here and it is really great to have you back. Now, to the boys and girls who are here, are you glad to be back at school? Yeah, I see one person saying yes. Okay, a couple don't, some don't look so sure. I'm sure even if you don't love school all the time, because I'm not sure anybody does, you probably have some things that you like doing at school. And when I was at school, I was trying to think back to a very long time ago when I was at school. And my favorite thing was to learn different languages. So I thought I'm gonna have a little quiz now. I'm gonna say something in another language and I want you to see if you can work out what language it is. Now, full disclaimer here, there may be people here who speak these languages a lot better than I do. I apologize for my pronunciation. But I'm going to have a go and just see if you can work out what language you think it is. So if I was to say, bienvenue, what language do you think I'm speaking? French. Very well done. Was that you, Harry, who got that? Well done. That one was French. What about bienvenido? Grown-ups can have a go as well, if you want. If you want to shout out. Spanish. Well done. Now, this one I think somebody here might speak, and I'm hoping I say it right. If I say willkommen, what language is that? German. Well done. Did I say it right? Fantastic. What about, these ones are a bit harder. What about Fulcher? Any ideas? Irish, well done. The last one's a tricky one. Bine atzi benit. Any ideas what it might be? No ideas? Not even my husband who I told the answer to beforehand, though. (laughs) Okay, that one was actually Romanian, okay? Because I learned that one whenever I went to Romania and to Moldova to do church teams a few years ago. But those words all actually mean the same thing in all those different languages. Does anybody know what they mean? You can shout it out. Welcome. Very well done. It means welcome. And I want to teach you this morning one more way that you might know or you might not to say welcome. 
Because even though I'm not at school anymore, I am, but as a teacher rather than as a student, I'm still learning. And one thing I'm learning at the minute is Makaton. And some of you might know little bits of Makaton, or you might be sitting there thinking, what on earth is she talking about? But Makaton uses a type of sign language. And what I'll do is I'll move to the side in a second and I'll show you how to do the sign for welcome. And then I want everybody to have a go at it after me. So with Makaton, we say the word and we do the sign. So for welcome, put your hands out in front of you like this and we go, welcome. Isn't it? It's like we're beckoning somebody to come in. And I love that sign because when we were thinking about the welcome area, I was thinking, well, what do we really mean by welcoming people? And it's telling somebody to come in, isn't it? And when we were thinking about the welcome area this morning, it is brilliant. We have an amazing building here and our welcome area is fantastic. But there's two things that we need if we're going to be really, really welcoming. One thing as well as our lovely welcome area, of course. One thing is, we need people to be doing the welcoming. We need people to be standing there saying, come in. So I want you to think about, what could you do to be welcoming? Maybe some of the boys and girls could think it might be saying hello to somebody or smiling at them when they come into church. I know you can't always see the smiles behind these masks, but it, does, it is very nice. Or maybe it might be out at Kids Zone, maybe sharing things with somebody in Kids Zone so that they feel welcome. The other thing we need if we're going to welcome people is we need people coming in for us to welcome. And so I thought the boys and girls could maybe think about whenever different groups start up again or things like Messy Church, is there somebody that you could maybe invite to come along who doesn't normally come to church? Because do you know what? Long, long time ago, when I was about eight years old, I didn't go to church. And I started going to church because my friend Kerry said, I go to Sunday school, you should come along. And she welcomed me into her church and all of her church welcomed me. And I stayed there for a long time. And then I moved to a different church. And then I came here and everybody welcomed me here as well. So maybe you could think about, is there somebody you could bring along so that we would have the chance to say, welcome, come in. And the grown-ups might want to think about that as well. Okay, so that's your challenge for this week. Shall we just pray together before you go to kids in? Hey, hands out to the side. Up in the air. Out to the side. Bring them together and we'll just pray. God, thank you that you welcome us whenever we come to church. We pray that we would be welcoming to other people, that we would let them know that they are welcome to come in here and to join with us, and that you would help us think about whether there's anybody that we could maybe invite along and be welcoming to, so that they could get to know what church is about as well. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. So I think boys and girls are going to kids in now, yeah? So if you want to head out. We come now to the dedication of our church council for this connectional year. Um, we change things uh, a little bit during um, COVID. Uh, normally, um, church council was appointed from the January until the December. Um, we changed it this year to uh, keep in line with the connectional year for us. So people serve from July through to the end of June each year. Um, and so, obviously, we couldn't uh, have a congregational meeting in the normal sense. Uh, we concluded, as you would have read in the report, 
um, for the congregational meeting uh, that people would continue serving uh, on the church council for um, a further year without elections and people were happy to serve. Um, so we come to the dedication of the church council this morning. Um, I know that a couple of the members of the council are unable to be with us this morning. Um, but uh, uh, for those who are members of the church council, can I just ask you to stand where you are now, please? Normally I bring people up to the front, but it's obviously uh, difficult um, uh, in these days. So just stay where you are. Sisters and brothers, you have been called by God and appointed by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for your service and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to this people and to our ministry in the world. As you live in Christ, make him known in your witness and your work. So to the members of the church council, do you acknowledge that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the world? Will you so live that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been appointed? And now a question to you as a congregation. And as you make this promise, I invite you to stand as you are able. The congregation, please stand. So as a congregation, will you do all you can to assist and encourage the church council in the responsibilities to which they have been called, supporting them by your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? We will. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your spirit upon these your servants who have been given the task of leadership within your church. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry, that they may enter into his joy and guide them in their work. Almighty God, may each of us know that as we serve you, we are playing our part in building for your kingdom. Amen. Please be seated. You'll see on the screen there the members of the church council for this year. And I do invite you to continue to hold them in your prayers. We meet on Tuesday evening for your information as well. Now Eleanor's going to read from God's word. The Old Testament reading is taken from 1 Chronicles 29, beginning at verse 10. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people 
that we should be able to give as generously as this. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. And the New Testament reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and worship together again.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, as we come now to reflect on your word to us, we ask for your spirit to speak to each of us. And then, Lord, grant us your grace to respond appropriately. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we gather together to uh, dedicate the refurbished welcome area, along with the cross and the communion kneeling stools, I want to say um, thank you to everyone who has played their part. From those who dealt with the nitty-gritty of meetings and conversations and oversight of the project, to everyone who has financially contributed, this is a joint effort. It's always dangerous to single people out, but on this occasion it is appropriate to do so. I want to make special mention of thanks to Brian Maxwell and to Ken McCoffin, who have given so much of their time and their energy on behalf of the church, coordinating the work with Mark McElhenney and Able Construction. So to you gentlemen, I want to say thank you on behalf of the congregation. During my time in circuit ministry, I've been involved in two major building schemes, one in Sligo and one in Knock. Now, this in no way can be classed as a major building scheme. It's simply a refurbishment. But nevertheless, I want us this morning to think about the building project that is close to God's heart. In the closing verses of Ephesians 2, Paul reminded the church of how they were built together as God's house. They were built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets. And of course, the cornerstone was Jesus Christ. Jews and Gentiles alike were being carefully joined together in Christ, becoming a holy temple for the Lord, where God lives by his Spirit. Using the imagery of pillars and foundations might have made the Ephesian Christians think of the temple of Diana in their own city. In his description of the temple, William Barclay wrote, one of its features was its pillars. It contained 127 pillars, every one of them the gift of a king. All were made of marble and some were studded with jewels and overlaid with gold. People traveled from all over the world to see this amazing piece of architecture that was 420 feet long, 220 feet wide, and 60 feet high. It was the greatest source of civic pride for the people who called Ephesus their home. And in contrast to this temple, Paul wrote that it was the people of God who were the temple of God. This temple of God, the church, wasn't made by human hands. It certainly wasn't and still isn't sparkling and majestic. In fact, it was and still is very plain and ordinary. Because after all, there is nothing special about us as individuals. But by God's grace, together as the church, we are the place where God resides. We are God's building project. And in this building project, God, uh, Jesus was that cornerstone. Now, a cornerstone, I'm sure you know, is that first stone which is set. And all stones are then set in reference to that stone thus determining the position of the entire structure. Simply put, the cornerstone is the most important stone. 
The total weight of a building rested on this particular stone, which, if removed, would collapse the whole structure. The cornerstone was also the key to keeping the walls straight. The builders would take sightings along the edges of this part of the building. If the cornerstone was set properly, the stonemasons could be assured that all the other corners of the building would be at the appropriate angles as well. Thus, the cornerstone became a symbol for that which held life together. The prophet Isaiah wrote about the cornerstone. In this context, God speaks to the people of, Jerusalem, of Judah, and he promises to send the cornerstone who will provide the firm foundation for their lives if they will only put their trust in him. Isaiah 28, verse 16, Therefore the Lord God says, Look, I'm laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a valuable cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who trusts won't tremble. But this cornerstone image gained an importance far beyond its architectural connotations. This stone, which Isaiah talked about, was significant because it promised security in a time of destruction. Even if a flood came and washed everything away, the cornerstone provided a place of refuge. And in the person of Jesus Christ, God had sent his chief cornerstone for this building project. As Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians, no one can lay any other foundation besides the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Not only is this building built on Christ, the cornerstone, but the whole building exists in him as well. And as he wrote to the Ephesian church, so he also said to the Corinthian church, don't you know that you are God's temple and God's spirit lives in you? So with Jesus as the cornerstone, God began to build his temple. But unlike the other temples made of materials like stone, this temple was and still is a house made of people. You and me. Verse 21 says, We are carefully joined together in him. The verses preceding uh, these verses at the end of Ephesians 2 reminds us of the context. As the formerly two races of Jew and Gentile coming together as a new single race as God's people. One of the dangers of Western culture and society is that of individualism. But as God's temple, we cannot separate our relationship with God from our relationships with others. God has carefully fit us together to be built up into his temple. In our lifetimes, we have seen buildings destroyed. Of course, we can think of buildings destroyed in our own city by terrorists in the 70s and 80s. But yesterday, of course, was the 20th anniversary of what has become known as 9-11, the terrorist attacks in the United States. For many of us, it was one of those occasions when we can remember where we were and what we were doing. And we remember with horror as the planes flew into the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York and how they collapsed a while later. There's been several documentaries on TV in the past week or so, and there was obviously a lot of coverage yesterday, recounting people's experiences of that day and what has happened since. 
here in the interviews of those speaking at the time when it happened, they were obviously traumatized due to the attacks with the amount of death caused and how people continue each day to live with that pain and suffering and loss. But one thing that also came through in those interviews was their utter shock and confusion and trauma as to how these two towers though fell as though they were made of matchsticks. These symbols of apparent greatness had fallen bringing so much death as well as destruction. In contrast, the temple of God can never be destroyed for it is built on Christ, the cornerstone. I began by referring to the great temple of Diana in the city of Ephesus. It's now in ruins. You can go and visit it and people can only imagine exactly what it would have looked like. But in contrast, the church, the temple of God, is built together by God with Christ as the cornerstone, the one upon whom the whole building exists. But there's even more than that. 1 Peter 2, verse 4 and 5, you are coming to Christ who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. Living stones. To us, stones are hard and solid, but we are called living stones. Living denotes that which is vibrant and changing. This is because God continues his work of transforming us and further building his temple. God's building project never ends until his kingdom comes in all its fullness. So as we dedicate the refurbished welcome area, the cross and the kneeling stools. Let us remember God's building project, giving thanks to him that he is the one who builds us together as his temple where he lives by his spirit. Let us pray together. Eternal God, thank you that we are your building project. Thank you that you are the one who builds us together perfectly and so carefully. And together, as your temple, that is where you live. So gracious God, we are so grateful for your calling upon our lives to follow you, to worship you, and to serve you. And we pray that you would give us encouragement as we see more and more of how you are further building your temple and all to your praise and glory. Through Christ, our Lord, the cornerstone. Amen. I'm going to invite uh, Brian to come forward and tell us a little bit about the uh, refurbished uh, welcome area. Thank you. The welcome area. This is a story of transformation. 
which created a bright new welcome area. And back in February, March 2020, we've got to go back a wee bit, and following a lot of congregational consultation, we awarded a contract to Mark McElhenney and his team at the ABLE Projects for the transformation of our vestibule into an attractive welcome area. We had estimated at that time a 10-week contract timescale, but that was BC before COVID. COVID brought with it lockdowns, illnesses, difficulties in supply chains, building materials not being available when required, and many, many other difficulties. A real nightmare for building contractors, and indeed for everyone involved in commerce and industry, as we well know. It was not too long into our contract until work was halted due to the first lockdown, and there were many other start-stop situations. So right at the start, I would like to congratulate Mark McElhenney and his company for all their efforts and the quality of their workmanship during these very difficult and trying conditions. It's been a long journey, but we finally got to the end of the contract phase in May of this year, and we're now in what is known as the defects period, and that will last until December. So what did the works consist of? Now, as you came into church this morning, you would have walked down the bright passageway between the, the large plate glass windows. They were new. And did you notice the memorial stones repositioned and made more of a feature? That was done as part of the works as well. Then there is the folding glass doors where a stud wall used to be between the vestibule and the tailor room. And can you imagine our surprise and somewhat dismay in finding that the stud wall concealed two vertical columns. Thankfully not 127 columns, but two was more than enough for us. And the function of these columns was to support the steel horizontal beams, which in turn support the upstairs floor. We called on the advice of a structural engineer, and the cost and time of removing these uprights and redesigning replacement ceiling beams and getting all the approvals would have been a mini project, building project on its own, and very costly. So we had to devise a way of incorporating the vertical uprights into the folding glass door design. And I hope that you think we haven't done too bad a job with that. If you haven't noticed the vertical columns, we've done a brilliant job. <laughs> We installed a new fire door at the foot of the stairs. This was requested in a fire risk assessment to improve safety of escape routes from the building and contain any fire that hopefully will not break out. New lighting, including emergency lighting and ceiling tiles, were installed throughout the whole area, including the kitchen. The large video screens were installed and linked to our, linked to our sign desk and PowerPoint projector. The walls were re-plastered and painted, and new carpet was laid. Now, there's two major items that I've deliberately left towards the end of this story. The first is the installation of new wall-mounted heaters in the welcome area and in the tailor room. The new heaters have been installed and have been used on a couple of occasions. They are not the old type of convector heater that we all knew and loved, in that someone could dash in 10 minutes before a meeting and there would be instant heat, or almost instant heat, and the group members could arrive you know, up to the last moment and still have a lot of heat. But you can't do that with these new modern heat-efficient programmable wall heaters. They operate continually on a timetable which needs to be programmed in advance when heat is required. Now, this is not really satisfactory for our purposes, and discussions are ongoing with the suppliers. But we must bear in mind, however, that we are in the era of energy conservation, and building requirements may prevent us from reverting to the convector type of heater, but this is still all part of our discussions. In the meantime, we're free to use the heaters that currently exist. The second item is the glass doors into the church. I think they look well. Do you? Yes, nods, yes, good. 
The etchings are to identify them as glass to meet with health and safety regulations. These new doors replaced a combined wooden glass panel door, and it was at these doors that every Sunday morning you would find Desmond Ferguson standing to welcome everyone in the church and to open the doors for them. Sadly, Desmond passed away before he had opportunity to view the completed welcome area. But I think and hope he would be pleased with what we have done. At this point, I would also like to join with Robin in sort of welcoming Francis and Dennis to our service this morning. You're very welcome. Francis is a cousin of Desmond's and has spent many long hours looking after him. So as a tribute to Desmond, we asked the contractor to preserve the wood from the doors and from it to make a cross and communion kneeling stools, as you see there. And these are also being dedicated this morning. Separately from our, the construction of our welcome area, but even after his passing, Desmond is having a big influence on the life of this church, as he's left us a very, an extremely generous legacy which is enabling us to appoint a family and children's worker, as well as pushing on to refurbish the welcome area kitchens and toilets. I should also mention that Desmond's legacy has enabled us to set aside 10,000 pounds in case of some unexpected emergency expenditures required. And we also allocated a tithe of 10%, which was about 9,500 pounds, to other Christian charities and £4,000 of that has already been donated to East Belfast Mission. Now, all this doesn't happen by itself, and we're grateful to God for his direction and guidance in this project. It was very much, as Robin said, a team effort, and the Property and Finance Committee, together with Church Council, were involved in all the major decisions as the project progressed. Like Robin, I don't like to single out any particular individual, but I must also pay tribute to our former property steward, Ken McGuffin. He was a real tower of strength throughout the works, so thank you, Ken. In closing, I can tell you that the final cost of the project, including the VAT, 20%, will be close to 66,000 pounds. And all funding is in place to meet that cost. So thank you to everyone associated with this congregation who gave so generously. We had a gift day in March 2020, which realized uh, over 32,000 pounds, an excellent total. And we obtained grants to the sum of 13,500 pounds. So we are very humbled and pleased with how everyone has played their part. So thank you to each person here and those watching sort of from home. And a special word of thanks to all who supported the project with their prayers. I trust in this new welcome area will be a blessing to the ministry of this church. Thank you, Robin. Thanks, Brian. Come now to the prayer of dedication. So I invite you to stand as you are able. Living God, with gratitude for all that has made it possible, we dedicate our renewed welcome area to you, asking that through it you will help us wisely, generously, creatively, and lovingly to speak of Christ and serve him more effectively. As we use the space for fellowship, discipleship, and mission, may all who use it know the presence and peace of your Holy Spirit. Living God, with gratitude for the legacy left to us by our dear brother Desmond Ferguson, we dedicate the cross and the communion kneeling stools to your praise and glory and in his memory. 
May they always be symbols of love. Your love for us as your people and the love we shared with Desmond. We dedicate to the glory of God the welcome area, the cross and kneeling stools. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We continue in prayer as we pray for others. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that we are your building project, that you fit us together, built up as a temple where you live. We thank you for those buildings in which we live and work and worship. We pray for those who don't have a building in which to live, for those who are homeless. May they find a building for shelter. We thank you for each other and the fellowship we share, that you build us together, each of us unique with all our backgrounds and experiences. We pray for those who feel on the outside of groups, who don't enjoy healthy and loving relationships with those around them. May they know your love and acceptance. We thank you that Jesus is the foundation of our lives. We pray for those who don't have good foundations in their lives, for those who have experienced brokenness from an early age and continue to live with pain and suffering. May they know your healing and wholeness. We thank you that by your spirit, you are continuing to build your church. We pray for those who proclaim your word, for ministers, local preachers, evangelists, and mission partners. Move in the hearts and lives of many people, and in seeing people's lives transformed, may that encourage us in our faith. And finally, we hold a moment of silence to pray for ourselves and those known to us who are facing challenges in their lives. We offer our prayers through Christ, our cornerstone, who taught us when praying together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we sing together our closing hymn, Blessed City, Heavenly Salem.
and let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.